Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Ubuntu 18.10 Cosmic Cuttlefish, the latest release of Ubuntu, has just seen its first and final beta release, so let's take a tour of what's new. Installation. First, the installer is now a lot faster. It uses Facebook's compression algorithm, Z standard, to unpack the packages used to install, which results in a speedier installation. At the first startup, an extra step has also been added to help you discover your system and help you configure your online accounts right from the beginning. Under the hood. Ubuntu 18.10 uses the Linux kernel version 4.18, which includes a lot of performance and battery life improvements, as well as some updated drivers as always. It also ships with GNOME 3.30, which adds a lot of new features and refinements to the desktop, but Ubuntu still sticks with Nodalus 3.26, which means that all improvements since the latest two versions of GNOME won't be included, and that's a shame. Ubuntu 18.10 will ship with a new wallpaper displaying its very cute new mascot, the Cosmic Cuttlefish, but it was not present in the beta I downloaded. It also provides Firefox version 61, Shotwell 0.30, LibreOffice 6.1.1, and Thunderbird 52. Look and feel. The main point of Ubuntu 18.10 is the new default theme. Ubuntu now ships with the Yaru theme, previously known as Community theme, and it looks pretty good. The colors are still the traditional Ubuntu orange browns, but it adds a flatter, more modern look, which is a welcome change. The new theme is complemented by the Suru icon theme, which is based on Ubuntu Phone's icon design. The icons look nice, but the fact that each icon is encased in a square shape is obviously bad for differentiation of the shapes, and not all apps have their own Suru icon, resulting in a few graphical hiccups here and there, with icons not looking consistent across the whole desktop. All in all, Ubuntu 18.10 looks pretty good, but there are still a few areas to work on. Snap Enhancements Snap packages are Ubuntu's take on the whole app shipping problem on Linux. Ubuntu 18.10 adds a few interesting features to the distribution method, such as improvements to the startup speed of pre-installed Snap applications, notably the calculator app, or the addition of a new status in the Ubuntu Software Center to quickly see which publisher is verified or not. Snap mounts are also hidden by default in the system monitor, which should clean up the interface. Unfortunately, there are still no way to browse snaps through subcategories, and you'll still see duplicate entries in the Ubuntu Software Center, one for the standard Deb app and the other for the Snap package. GNOME improvements. Shipping with GNOME 3.30, Ubuntu benefits from almost all of its improvements. The highlights include a faster GNOME shell, since GJS, the JavaScript engine used to power a GNOME shell, has been updated to SpiderMonkey version 60. It means that performance is now better, and it now uses less memory as well with smoother animations. To be honest, I didn't really notice any performance improvement, but I ran this beta on a virtual machine, so that's probably my fault. GNOME now supports natively the Thunderbolt interface, with automatic hiding of the settings if your computer does not have the required hardware. This automatic hiding has been applied to all hardware settings panel, so for example, if your computer does not support Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you won't see these options in the system settings. In the Activities view, all workspace are now visible by default as soon as they have at least one application in them, instead of being semi-hidden on the right side of the screen. GNOME 3.30 also enhances a lot of its default apps, such as GNOME Boxes, GNOME Games, or GNOME Builder. It even adds a new podcast application. But Ubuntu does not ship these by default. Ubuntu also misses on the new Nautilus toolbar layout, dynamic resizing, and faster file search, since it is sticking with Nautilus 3.26. Ubuntu 18.10 is stated to release on the 18th of October, and this will be its only beta. All in all, it looks like a stable release, but a little short on new features. At this point, there are little Ubuntu-specific developments that could entice a GNOME user to switch to Ubuntu's customized version. We'll talk a little bit more about Ubuntu and its desktop strategy in other videos. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!